Hi, I'm Karen Prosser, Executive Director of Chagrin Arts, and I'm excited to talk to you today because just a few days ago, um, a good friend, Hannah Moses, who's the cellist with the Callisto Quartet, contacted me. And uh, as you know, we haven't been hearing live music and they missed performing together. So she said, do you know of a park someplace? Maybe we could do a concert in the park. So I contacted my friends at the city of Solon and uh, one, two, three, concert in the park, Friday, July 17th at 7 p.m. I hope you can put that on your calendar. It's been a long time. As you know, COVID-19 has had a tremendous effect on the arts community, particularly the people who have dedicated their lives and talents to bringing music, theater, and all forms of the arts into our lives. I would like to suggest that you take a moment to find the Callisto Quartet PayPal link in the description or on our website, chagrinarts.org, and make a gift to the quartet as a thank you for giving us this concert in the park and providing the incredible opportunity to hear live music again. It's been so long. Chagrin Arts thanks you. I personally thank you as a musician and members of the Callisto Quartet. Paul, Rachel, Eva, and Hannah, thank you for your kindness. Stay safe and stay well. And now enjoy meeting the Callisto Quartet. All right, so thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Gabby, I'm with Chagrin Arts. Um, would you guys like to introduce yourselves um, with your name and the instrument that you play within the quartet? Sure. Uh, my name is Eva Kennedy, uh, and I, I play viola. Uh, my name is Hannah Moses, and I play cello. I'm Rachel Stenzel, and I play violin. I'm Paul Aguilar, and I play violin. So, how did you all meet? We all went to school at the Cleveland Institute of Music. Um, we all graduated there in, a year ago, and that was where we met. We started playing together in 2016, um, and we all knew of each other and had played in different configurations and pairings. We all knew that we were really serious about chamber music, and really wanted to play in a string quartet. So that was certainly one thing that really drew us together at the beginning. Um, even though we weren't all friends, didn't even know each other, but through the whole process then, became friends and really clicked as a group. So how did you come up with the name Callisto Quartet? So we needed, I think the when we initially named ourselves was just when we needed a name for a concert that we were playing at school. We had only been playing together uh, a month or two. And I remember being on a car ride with Hannah and just frantically Googling things, trying to come up with things that sounded good. Um, and so Callisto is one of Jupiter's four main moons. Um, and we liked kind of that symbology of four moons and four people in the quartet. Um, and we also just thought it sounded nice. Oh, that's beautiful. So how would you say you have evolved since you started playing together as a quartet? Maybe what are some things that you've, you know, grown to change or evolve? I think when we started out, you know, again, as, as Rachel said, you know, we were, we were all so serious about chamber music and, and just wanted to play it as well as we possibly could. And I think that, you know, we've, we've learned so much from being together, from working so intensely over the, over the past few years and having lots of experiences together, whether it be um, playing concerts or doing competitions or just traveling together and kind of living in a small space together when we're on the road. Um, but we've learned so much about how we work on music and how we think about music. And we've really grown together in developing a, a group identity in terms of, of how we think and interpret. Um, and that's just a, a really wonderful thing uh, that um, it continues to uh, develop and evolve. But I'm um, just really looking back over it. Um, I can say I'm so grateful to have been to, to be part of that process because um, it really uh, is, is very time intensive and it wouldn't be possible without I think the, the other three people that are in the group, um, the exact people. That, that relationship. 
So would you say that you guys all kind of motivate each other, like kind of like a synergy effect? Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So do you individually or as a group have a favorite composer or time period that you like to play? That's really hard. Um, one of the great things about playing string quartets is we're so lucky to have such a wide range of uh, such great music. Um, so, you know, we are still um, getting through a lot of the, the standard repertoire, which we love. Um, some of my personal favorite stuff to play is uh, Beethoven quartets, just because they're just the gold standard for string quartets. And um, there's, you know, so many of them and they're all so unique and so um, hard to work on and really, really rewarding. So that that's one of my personal favorite things to play. I think another uh, thing that's fun about string quartet playing is that um, so many people love to write for this instrumentation. So like Hannah said, there is a boundless ocean of amazing standard repertoire. And there's also another boundless ocean of amazing repertoire that's not standard or isn't standard yet or is still being written. Um, and it's always fun when we have the opportunity to um, commission new works or premiere new works or play works by living composers um, and just how how much breadth there is in this genre. It's really a privilege. I think also, you know, because we have the opportunity to work as much as we do on each piece that we that we play and perform, um, oftentimes, you know, most of the pieces we're playing at one point or another will all be, uh, you know, talking and, and, and think, wow, this is the best thing. And we're so excited and so, you know, fortunate to be working on this and it's our favorite piece. And then that will change and it'll be something else. And, um, but that's just one of the great uh, benefits of, of being in a dedicated ensemble. How long would you say on average it takes you all to start a piece from the very beginning to feeling comfortable enough to perform it live? I think it really depends on the piece. Um, <clears throat> Before we start rehearsing anything as a group, we always learn our parts individually. And we usually have seen the score, looked at the score, listened to recordings. So we have an idea of how it's gonna to fit together. But that process of putting it together really varies depending on the piece. So if it's a piece, maybe Mozart or Haydn, which is, I hesitate to say simpler in construction, not easier, but simpler um, in its form, I would say, maybe two weeks and we would feel comfortable um, playing it, but that does not mean it's a finished product. Then we love to keep working on it because performing it one time is part of the process of learning it and refining it for us. So we like to perform it many times along the way as we learn it. But then on the other hand, if it's a piece, I mean, Beethoven quartets get more and more challenging, they get more complicated, the pieces get longer in length, when you get into the Romantic and especially the 20th century, um, many of the pieces are just much more complex and intricate. And so figuring out the score and how all the parts interact just takes more time. So it does matter, uh, depend on the piece. For sure. So is there a favorite place that you have performed in the past that you maybe wish you could go back to? We're so lucky because we have gotten to travel a lot and I think we could probably each name 10 different places that we have loved performing that we would love to return to. Um, so I don't know if we could say like one favorite, but um, maybe, maybe one of the most memorable for me was the Melbourne Recital Hall in Melbourne, Australia. Just a gorgeous space. We had the opportunity to play there when we were in the finals of the Melbourne International Chamber Music Competition. Um, and so it was just a really exciting time for us and the hall was brand new and it just had uh, just a gorgeous acoustic and it was a sold out audience. And so that was just a really memorable performance, definitely. For me right now, I would like to go anywhere and just perform anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, traveling is one of the great benefits of being in a string quartet, and it's something we haven't been able to do in a while, so. 
It's an yeah. odd, odd experience. When I think. I was going to say, when is the last time you guys have performed together? Um, we did a live stream concert in March, mid March, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but the last time we performed for a live audience was in January, I think. So that's the longest time, certainly, that we've gone without performing for a live audience since we formed, I think. So how it has, besides maybe not performing live, how has this pandemic affected the quartet overall? Well, I think um, one of the, I'll start with the positives of how it's affected us. Um, we actually, when it started, we were all together in Houston, Texas, where we're based. Um, and we had the great fortune to be kind of quarantined together. Um, so we had the opportunity to sort of learn some new repertoire that we wouldn't necessarily like plan on performing anytime soon, but just sort of like things that we had always kind of wanted to learn and never really had the time to do. So it was actually a great time for us to kind of, you know, just work through some of these these cool pieces. Um, so that was kind of a lot of a lot of fun, um, even though we were stuck in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Do you guys have any upcoming events or concerts that you'd like to share? We have some, but of course they're uh, TBD um, as, as far as, as, as what will take place in the fall or, or even next year. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's I so guess. hard to know. Yeah. Do you all have an ultimate vision or goal if you know the world was perfect what would the quartet look like what is the ultimate end goal i mean maybe this is a cop-out answer but i know that we all just really love playing chamber music and really love this repertoire so um any future that allows us to keep doing that uh, i think that's really what we strive for we love we love traveling we love performing we love teaching uh, any sort of way that we can continue uh, connecting to this music and connecting to um, students and audiences is, that's kind of our goal, I think. Yeah, is there anything else that anyone wants to add to anything we've talked about or anything completely separate? Where can people find out more about you as a group? Um, you can go to our website is www.callistoquartet.com. We also are on Instagram and Facebook at Callisto Quartet. Um, yeah, we're always happy to connect with people. So please shoot us a message and follow us and um, yeah, interact with us. We've got plenty of videos on YouTube. If you just search our quartet, lots of performances. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day, answering those questions. It was great to have you here. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Appreciate it.